Hello and welcome to Outlander's Guide to Ladaria Session 11! We're here! It's happening! Let's go see our players! <laughs> Hello! Hello! Hi! Wait, oh, we should have been posting that to memes. I, I have sinned. Oh, you, you think this is a meme? <laughs> <laughs> Hi! What am I looking at? My next the character future. concept. Ah. Uh. In the event that we lose the professor, I'm playing Ness if he was a JoJo character, and uh, the flying man is my stand. <laughs> it's Astro Monk coming right up. Well. <laughs> you can work that into the fiction of the world, right? It'll, it'll work. Hey, we already have one child in the group. <laughs> Let's all be psychic children. <laughs> We're pulling in another psychic child, but this one has a spiritual bird as like his god or something and only uses a club. Uh, yeah, that works. And lightning lure. <laughs> okay, well... That is like a very effective way to make me have Pontifex have like plot armor from now on. <laughs> good I mean, good I job. Because you mean like just haphazardly dive into everything <laughs> 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 with my four dexterity. <laughs> make all the dex saves in the game and be fine. <laughs> make a dex save, Pontifex. Oh, yeah, that's a two. You miraculously made the save, GC. <laughs> DC one. <laughs> oh, it was two minus three, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's me rolling negatives on deaths uh, on deck saves is like a very real thing. Negatives on death saves. DC minus five, <laughs> you passed. Uh okay, 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 okay. All right. Um, with that nightmare out of the way. Uh, recap. It's been like two weeks since we played. Yeah, and... uh, so I've had lots of time to prepare. Yay! It's Jason's turn! Just kidding. Aww. Uh, guys, this is gonna be a bit of a letdown. I'm just gonna do a normal recap. I'm sorry. Oh, that's so meta. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's with no all visual like, aids or gimmicks or anything. With all like the drawings and the comic books and the videos <laughs> and, and all I of know. that stuff and like the, the pixel art and all the things, just like straight up walking in here and just giving a raw recap. It's like pretty pretty chad of you, I'm not gonna oh, lie. It's, yeah, it's, it's a power move. I kinda like that. <laughs> Super uh, cool. I'll allow it. I wish I wish I could be as cool as Tekka. <laughs> All right. No one, can. no one can. So, last session. By the way, if I get something wrong, feel free to jump in and correct me. I'm literally just reading off of some very rough notes I made. All right. Uh, we started out catching up with Talix in Wera, which is the Dragon Town. Uh, he went in a big shiny church. It was very important to detail all the ways in which this church was like super beautiful and they had like golden lion statues and marble pillars and the church had a bunch of money and no one else has money. But <laughs> Alice is like, I don't care about that. I don't care about how much money you have. I'm better than that. And can I get some of your money, please? So the priest was like, uh, yeah, just help us like throw those stinky fish people in jail. And, uh, by the way, Ladarians are gross. I just want you to know how racist I am, but I'm also very refined. I, I don't uh, recall. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was definitely what happened. But uh, Talix was like, uh, well, can I not do that? And the priest was like, okay, just be detective, but you're supposed to detect that they're guilty. <laughs> and anyways, technically you get money either way. Oh, also, if you could, like, steal that corpse back, that'd be cool. Uh, so that was that. The gang... Oh, yeah, so after that, the gang meets up in the aftermath of a gunshot uh, made by some very tough, tough guy gnomes. 
And then Talix and Pontifex were like, hey, Pip, would you steal their gun? And Pip makes like a... <laughs> so I think that was a yes. Um, so Pontifex wants to pawn his fancy magic clothes. So we all get drugged along to the pawn shop. Uh, we stop outside for a little bit, just enough to be racist and then misgender and no. <laughs> uh, and then you go in. Uh, so... Uh, Pip wants to look for rocks, he finds none. Talix wants to look for some old, torn up, cheap books. And uh, he finds some, but they cost a billion. So they, like, both sneak out. But Pontifex, like, just grabs Pip and rips him back in the door. Like, no, you gotta see this! So they uh, go see the big, shiny dragonborn dude and fawn over him for a little bit. And, uh... Dragonborn takes the robes and he's like, yeah, you can uh, totally get these back anytime. You just got to keep this receipt and give me your name and social security number, memorize this cryptographic message, and be prepared to solve a Sudoku in less than 15 minutes. And then you can totally get it back, or else I keep your item, your soul, and replace you as Matt's player character. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, outside, the others chat. Uh, Talix is like, we got to fish, we got to save these fish people. Uh, so, Tekka, you're like, you know, local looking. Can you like help me jive <laughs> with these people? You're young and hip and relatable. And Tekka responds with something weird. It's like, uh, we see the flower wilts, but the disease hides in the roots or something like that. And everyone's <laughs> like, bro, you know something. You're acting like you know something. Just say it. <laughs> we still have no idea what's going on with Tekka. That is exactly the kind of thing that Tekka would say. Uh, <laughs> and then Brooke's like, hey, look, it's that big metal bird. We finally saw it. Hey, we're being spied on. We're like, oh, shit. Well, there it is. And then we move on. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so Pontifex berates another innocent woman and then buys a pearl from her. Uh, we briefly, not briefly, debate which mission to take. Uh between the detective thing and Brooke's previously given mission of hunting a wolf. Talix tries to appeal to Tekka by being like, Hey, I'm I'm your friend though. I'm an ally. I totally get you, man. I'm like, can you start calling me brother? I think that'd be really cool. I, I'm cool like you, right, Tekka? And Tekka just says something else like, uh, There are two sides of the leaf toppling over and over again in the wind. Where it settles is out of your control. I have no idea what he actually said. Uh, and then Brooks like, hey, by the way, the wolf's made of like freaking gemstones. We're going to be rich. So everyone's like, yeah, let's go with the wolf. Uh, so we meet with the farmers. Uh, they're like, there's some loud racism, but it's only from one specific farmer out of eight, which like given that they're farmers, not bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would certainly never generalize about a group of people. Um, <laughs> also, like, she mentions that she's missing her children, but we don't like her, so we're like, fuck those kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they talk about the wolf. Uh, it attacks, like, once or twice a week, pretty regular, uh, but there's, like, this very clear description of this wolf that no one's actually seen, but uh, apparently it's about standard wolf size, but then the DM actually describes like a rhinoceros, so probably not. <laughs> um, but we're pretty sure it's alone. So Pontifex is like, all right, Pip, Talix, I need to make sure we're on the same page. We're killing this thing, right? Talix is like, no, please. Uh, <laughs> And then he's, well, Pontifex is like, but it's probably like a uh, Frankenstein wolf. So like we, we need to kill it. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, yeah, this is where I stopped trying to be funny. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we talk, we talk to the chickens. Pip cries again because one of the chickens has a name and that totally changes everything. <laughs> Uh, she's totally dead. Uh, Tekka, like, communes with the spirits and then says something like, uh, if you walk blindly between the trees, I'm gonna fucking hang you on this noose that I made. And they're like, 
Tekka, what the fuck? But we leave it there, whatever. <laughs> he's, he probably knows what he's doing. He seems very informed. Uh, so... Uh, then we go to the forest and Pip talks to yet more birds. Uh, and we're like, oh, hey, we're following this trail. That's pretty cool. And then the DM's like, but are you sure you don't want to talk to the bird, though? And then we say again, we're going to follow the trail. The DM's like, you sure you don't want to talk to this bird? And then Pip goes to talk to the bird. And Pontifex tags along. We send our two strongest people, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the decrepit old man and the child. It's a good, good plan. Uh, and so then they almost die. And but right side, cool thing happens with Squeak. He turns into a freaking badass demon scorpion thing. Uh, his real name, I wrote down the pronunciation. Squeakosterox Good Junior is how Austin <laughs> pronounced it. It's his Good Junior. Uh. So we learn the whole thing about imp, about, uh, <laughs> about yeah, imp squeak. Yes, the demon. I know. So for Ooh. some reason, at three different points in this conversation, y'all corrected Talix, being like, "He's not a demon. He's a devil." <laughs> Talix never said demon. He only said devil. And you all went out of your way to correct a. Mistake that didn't happen. God damn, Talix knows the difference. He studies this shit. Sorry, that, that Jason did not take this personally at all. So um, racist. Yes, yes, and also Talix gets accused of being racist. Just casual racism. Like the imp. Come on, it's because he's an actual devil. You gotta be open minded. Pontifex is like, I'm so open-minded all the time. Talix, you need to, like, chill, bro. I'm, I'm improv at this point. I don't know if I'm landing this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we we fight the hawk bear, squeak sauce, and uh, we find out that he's, like, an assassin demon in, a, in the pocket. I said demon, but Talix would not. Uh, <laughs> and then we're like, oh, wait, hey, this trail is, uh, it kind of sucks, because it was the thing that we just killed already. Oh well. Hey, look, there's howling. Let's go back there. <laughs> Fight time! Hopefully. That's where we're at. <laughs> Anyone? We follow that fine, right? You we have the jerk. first acted recap you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. You what? tempered our expectations and then did stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's what happened. Was All right. Like combination of slam poetry <laughs> <laughs> and then in the middle you did it again he said this is where I stopped trying to be funny and then you kept it going <laughs> well okay I'm glad that I'm glad that pleased you to some extent All right. oh yeah that, that landed great. that landed okay wait oh. hold on hold on what? wait what does this mean that we don't have to bend our ourselves backwards and torture ourselves to make a recap that's entertaining? No, that is not what that means. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that how you guys have been feeling? <laughs> no. My first one, yes. <laughs> I, went, I went way out of my comfort zone for that one. Oh. <clears throat> Jason, that was, that was so good. Thank you for this gift you've given us. <laughs> Uh, Let's okay. go befriend a wolf. That's what we're gonna do, right? Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask. Because um, we haven't 100% <coughs> settled on where you guys are heading uh, now. Like, you were about to head back uh, to the farm and you were gonna uh, set up like an ambush there if the wolf showed up to, um, to attack the animals. Uh, and then you heard the howling. And like I ended a session there, so um, we're gonna pick up from there, and you can decide where you want to go and what you want to do. Starting now. I think we go for the howling, right? If you guys still feel good enough for that. Uh, oh. What? It's our job. We need to make sure nothing bad's gonna happen. If anyone's not feeling up to the task, just stay back. 
It's only one creature, and... Well, we don't know what we're up against yet, but we at least need to see what's going on. Right? <laughs> if yeah. we are all up to the task, then we have our mission. I think we were all committed from the beginning. Well, we either put the big bear bait at the farm or we put it down here and hide. Either way. I mean, we can just leave it here, right? Uh, okay, how quickly can... Oh, right, you've got it on the disc, I forgot. All right, yeah, let's, uh, let's go. We can try it out, try your plan. But we have to hurry. We don't want anything else to happen to the farmers. I will move with utmost haste. <laughs> <laughs> like a blur in the night. All right. Okay, what exactly are you doing with the body? It's on that disc, right? It's on yeah, it's on my disc, little red wagon. Yes. <laughs> Just sort of floating it with us as we slowly move in the direction of the howling, is that right? Yeah, it just uh, follows Bonifex. You wanted okay. to use it as a bait, or did I just misunderstand? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Okay. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this means that you are heading back to the west, uh, in the opposite direction compared to where the colony is, and a little bit to the to the south, uh, um, roughly. Did this? Uh, I'm I'm using Talix's last uh, uh, survival check that he rolled right at the end of the session uh, for like in terms of directions and like not getting lost and having a rough idea where you guys are at any one moment. Um, you're pushing through the slumbering forest. Uh, the two moons shining bright above you provide some light whenever the canopy of leaves allows it, but you're mainly relying on a brilliant spot atop Pontifex's staff to see where you're going. The simple act of being outside this late into the night makes everything a little sinister. The tree's branches curve forward like skeletal fingers reaching for your hair, and the sound of twigs snapping under your, the weight of your boots echoes all around you for seconds after you passed. There's a moment where a critter crosses your path, and it's hard to say whether you or it were most afraid. Though it's hard to um, keep track of the exact passage of time, at some point tonight you must have crossed from the, thir from the third month of the year into the fourth. It's now the first day of Amua, the month of the opossum, a time associated with peace and positive change, but that this knowledge brings you little comfort in your current situation. You've been marching towards the howling sound for about half an hour uh, by the time you hear a different kind of noise. And uh, um, it's loud enough uh, and sudden enough. It makes all of you jump, all of you hear it with clarity. <clears throat> Coming roughly in the direction you're going towards, although still uh, a small distance away from you. Um, it sounds like thunder, like lightning just struck the ground somewhere up ahead uh, in front of you. But uh, the sky is clear and uh, there is no rain and you saw no flash of light. Does it sound like what that gnome did before? It sounds exactly like it. Wait for hurry. Let's go towards the noise. <clears throat> Right. As you pick up the I pace, suppose. and Talix corrects the direction a little bit, heading for uh, the spot where that sound was heard. About uh, uh, perhaps 20 to 30 seconds later, you hear a scream. Uh, the voice uh, of uh, um, someone young, perhaps a kid about Pip's age. Um, a scream of terror. 
right somewhere ahead of you. I'm going to have everybody roll initiative at this point. Mm. <clears throat> oh, damn. Mm. This doesn't sound like wolf things. This sounds mm. like... Murder. <laughs> <laughs> Murder. Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> the How do I... The street he only continues. rolls nat 20s. How do I open the Because he's so the cool. Uh, let head? me... Here you go. Ah, thank you. I hate it from you. Tech is so freaking cool. <laughs> I am set. I am also set. I think I'm. Oh no, I'm last. You're not. You're not. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I need to roll for a squeak. I need to you roll sure for do. a sweet gosh to rask. You are last. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I had forgotten to do something. <laughs> I'm injured. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> Join the support group. <laughs> Oh yeah, support. I'll just cast my healing spells. <laughs> oh, this one. <clears throat> I knew there was something I was supposed to do and I hadn't. Um, but luckily, I knew where to find them. Bloop. Oh. Oh. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, this what? could be one of the lady's missing kids. And on the ground will be the lady. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I was saying we heard a child scream for some reason. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I feel like we all unanimously agree that if it's actually one of the, that that lady's kids, we just kind of yeah, decide yeah, this, this is fine. This away. problem will just resolve itself. <laughs> <laughs> Are we the baddies? <laughs> no, she's racist. <laughs> oh no, there's another model fail to load. I'm afraid I'm supposed to be seeing something. Oh no! Ah. Uh... Is it this one? Yes. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it. It's okay. Uh, you can see it. The stream can I, see it. Yeah, but you can use your We'll tool. just use our imagination. No, I can't. Is it, ask. Am I supposed to see it right now? No, not yet. Uh, it's just okay. on my side of the table. I can't let. Uh, uh, okay, do you see the message if I pull this out? Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, this one? Yep. How do we oh, fix no. that last time? I only got the message once. Oh yeah, wait, I, I know one. how to fix it last time. And yeah, yeah. Is there like a make everyone reload this thing? Okay, yeah, the model is indeed broken. Hmm. Uh oh. <clears throat> so I guess it works for me because it's cached somewhere in my yeah. Local files, but I don't know how to, where to find that cache. Because if I could just like it's... upload that module for me, that would do it. Should be that link, right? No, because the link oh. is a drive oh, folder. Link broken. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard. You're not gonna be able to do it on stream. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Uh. I guess that's where Just we have for now. Just use the broken thing. Yeah. You can still <coughs> see it, right? Yeah, it works for me. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We'll imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want us to look at the stream once? No. See how it looks. No need. I will make your. Uh, I will make the electricity in your brain do all the work for me. 
本使おう。There is no electricity left today. <laughs> you would be dead. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I、okay. opt out of paying my electric bill and just get the lights <laughs> turned out, please? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna push all of you to kind of the edge of the table. <laughs> Nope. It's always so nope. jarring nope. seeing all of our pieces、nope. be picked up at once and like all the, the distance markers on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay.、Um, after hearing the scream,、uh, you all rush forward, and Tekka, you're the,、um, you're the fastest person, so、uh, go ahead and move your token forward、uh, up to its、so. walking speed. And that, 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 I mean, take your turn, do whatever you'd like. And then once you're,、okay. yeah, once you get over here, I can、uh, describe to you、um, what you see. It is a bit of a,、um, of a clearing in the forest,、uh, an area where、um, there's enough space between the trees where you can see a little bit further、uh, as far as your, your own、uh, vision. Your dark vision, yes? Yeah. Okay.、Mm -hmm. Good. 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60. See, okay, you can see about halfway、uh, into this clearing. And uh, uh, if, as soon as you, you, you、um, push past、uh, these few trees that were in your way,、uh, you immediately notice、uh, blood. Some of it pulled on the ground, splattered on the leaves.、Um, it, it, it shines uh, uh, under the light of the moons.、Um, whatever. Whatever lies ahead, however, it's still a little bit out、uh, of your sight.、Hmm. Okay.、Uh, I think Tekka will、like, give a quick look back and shout Pip! Pontifex! Stand behind the others! And then he'll dash forward. And 20, 40, 50, 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. Ahead of you,、uh, again, a vision of blood. Blood covering the snout of a wolf, biting down on the mangled arm of a young kid.、Um, the, uh, this kid being uh, about. Uh, uh, Having hit puberty somewhat uh, uh, recently、uh, in terms of age,、uh, he's screaming and he's、uh, desperately kicking at the, at the head of the beast in an attempt to break free,、uh, while the wolf growls and sinks its fangs deeper into his flesh.、Uh, a few feet away,、uh, there's another kid, this one younger,、um, also、uh, at, at first saying. Nothing, just staring at the scene unfolding、uh, in front of him. And then his scream also、uh, echoes throughout the clearing. Is there、uh, anything else on your turn?、Uh, well, that was the bonus action, actually.、Uh, the bash. So let's see, is there anything? Oh my god, I don't know why I can make that. It's too far. Yeah, I think Tekka's just gonna run one more time. Okay, here. That's where. Not the p r e p a r size. Okay, is that everything? Yeah, I can't do much else, unfortunately. <clears throat> You're in like a hundred miles. What else do you want? <laughs> True. <laughs>、uh, It's all gonna be three turns for us, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay.、Uh, in front of you, the, the kid that is currently、uh, trapped、uh, in the fangs、uh, of the wolf、uh, um, kicks at its face and tries to break free. Uh, very unsuccessfully so.、Uh, oh. 
A quick question. Is yeah. this the giant... Oh, well, yeah. Name gives it away. So yeah, this thing's huge, right? Um, It's pretty big. It's... Right. Yeah, in, in terms of D&D size, it's large. Okay. Um, you see, like, it is exactly a 10 foot by 10 foot cube <laughs> of wolf. <laughs> this wolf is huge, right? It's more than that, it's large. That's the thing I like. Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft. It's just a 10 foot cube that <laughs> vaguely looks like a wolf. See, I told you this is Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Throw okay, bones at uh, Where is it? Here we go. <laughs> Hold on, I've got some in my hair. <laughs> I've still got one of Jamiel's bones. Uh, okay. In turn, uh, as a wolf uh, bites further into the teen's arm and begins to also claw uh, at its at his uh, uh, helpless body. Um, oh, okay. Oh, fuck. Got it. Um, Tekka, in terms of what the wolf uh, looks like besides its, its uh, size and color, um, it's somewhat <laughs> how many hundreds of hit points. Um, you can indeed see uh, that uh, uh, matching the sketch that Alex got to draw, uh, this wolf appears to have red gemstones sticking out of its fur, particularly particularly around uh, uh, the neck, almost, uh, almost like a mane of sorts. And uh, its uh, teeth, uh, uh, its fangs and its claws also seem to, ma to be made out of rubies. Um, uh... Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was looking at Discord. Ah, uh, and uh, uh, Tekka, the teen in question, uh, stops screaming. Rook. Dennis? Ah. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was just checking my movement. So 30, and I use my action to death. I guess that's it. Actually, yeah, that's it. Okay. Dip? Oh. Uh. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I think Pip will will not dash quite yet. It's still a little skittish. Uh, so we'll stay right there, but we'll reach down into his pouch and uh make some magic stones just in case okay pontifex uh, i think after uh tekka and then brooke start to run off and uh and pip is slowing down pontifex is like wheezing uh, like wait <laughs> I, hold on, i have a thing for this uh he's gonna <laughs> step forward as much as he can I think he's going straight after Pip. And are you within range? Uh, I'm going to use to check range. I can't read it through the trees. So <laughs> <laughs> that's 45. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, then uh, Pontifex is going to cast uh, Bless on the only three people within range, which is himself, Pip, and Talix. Huh. Okay, anything else? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's that he's just like wheezing after the group and is like clutching his little goat <laughs> amulet and... Oh wait, no, hold on, I got the thing! I forgot about this! He grabs the thing here! 
I feel it. <laughs> it's uh, the the goat bleeding is like coming through his clenched hand, so it kind of sounds like a goat bleeding if someone was trying to cover its mouth. <laughs> his amulet has a speaker in it. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> Better low. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Sounds like a, one of those kind of like Furbies after a while. Uh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. Just waits to go up in the middle of the night randomly. <laughs> uh, no, I, for like 300 years and I was told to replace it, but it has sentimental value. <laughs> I can't confirm the memes. That was my personal experience with one of them. Oh, that everyone's experience with the Furby ends that way. Yeah, it all ends <laughs> with the horror. Well, and then the fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> and it still screams as it melts. <laughs> I have a funny story about this, but it can wait. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Tekka, the, the child that's a few feet away from all this happening, is uh, um, with, with shaking hands, is going to hold up a crossbow, but is uh, ultimately too afraid to actually shoot it. Talix. Hang on. All right. <laughs> he only has one. I can clearly see his two. <laughs> He's been playing too much COD. He's trying to do a Kimbo. It's like it's very much stuff. like the child logic of like, hey, crossbows are dope. What if I had two of them? <laughs> <laughs> There are like no, no meanies no for kids. About the problems entailed. What if I had a crossbow that shot crossbows? <laughs> a, cr okay. a crossbow pult. I'm. Well, I should probably actually be here instead. <laughs> I'm yeah, chasing. Yeah. I'm dashing. I'm trying to get up close enough to do something, but still nowhere near close enough to do anything to help right now. Just yeah. Talix is desperately is right He's so just, fast. He's just gonna. Talix is just gonna start yelling, like just gibberish, like hey, hey, hey! Fenton! Just try to like do anything. In woods. Yeah, maybe just try to startle the wolf or something. That's about all he can do. Right into my ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. You got the you got the real experience of trying to immerse you, Dennis. Oh no, my senses oh. have been dulled. Hold on, we have something for this. Here we go. Only in one ear. Oh. I'm just playing. Oh, <laughs> perfect. I saw I got. Okay, squeak. Squikasturox Junior. Ah, crap. There's always something, huh? All right, time to join the fun. <laughs> and then uh, squeak in rat form. Then uh, Pontifex, you see, starts to morph and the skin sort of bubbles a little bit and the bones <laughs> twist Wait, and crack. Wait, Pontifex is morphing? No, you see, <laughs> I thought that you were just fucking altered self. <laughs> 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 I see the frog start to turn into this grotesque monstrosity. <laughs> all, all of that is squeak, and then, <laughs> and then you see uh, feathers start to appear, and squeak is no longer a rat. Squeak is bird. Squeak <gasps> is squawk. <gasps> Another bird? <laughs> you had a second pun lined up. <laughs> you are so. There's so many layers to this. There's so many layers. And Squeak flies with 60 movement speed. Squeak is squawk. Squeak is carrying this party. Like, <laughs> who invited the level 10 rat? <laughs> Demon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Her. And, uh, that's gotta be it for now. I'm flying okay. like ten feet up. What kind of bird? <laughs> uh, it is. Squawk. 
It is a raven, I believe. Yeah. Nice. Talix will share fun raven facts with everyone later. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, that's so raven. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to Tekka. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, uh, so Tekka, after running so fast, he quickly stands, steadies his breath, and then he's going to try, uh, he's going to grab the quarterstaff with both hands in like an upper, um, upper arm hold, and then sort of pry, ram one, uh, one end behind the molars of the wolf and try to pry open its jaw. Hmm. Okay. Cool. We're gonna use uh, <laughs> your. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this like an attack to see if we can like basically aim the quarter staff in a proper spot. Okay. So you just have to to beat its uh, armor class. Uh, which doesn't happen. Uh, so nope. unfortunately, with the with the wolf, uh, you know that thing that dogs do when they grab a toy and then they like shake their head. Um, oh no! It's uh, it's it's difficult to uh, to stick one part of your uh, quarter staff. Uh, <laughs> um, in, in that specific spot. Uh, okay. Then I'm going to do another attack. Um, and this... Tekka's gonna try to, like, uh, sweep its back paw or back leg. Try to pull, get it off balance. Okay, run it up at me one more time. Okay, so yeah, doing a bonus attack. Tekka's gonna try and sweep its back right, the hind leg, to try to like, throw it off balance. Okay. Is that a monk thing? Uh, unarmed strike. Uh, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action when you use attack. Okay. Can you just like Which... substitute a shove for that attack? Mm-hmm. And counts with normal attacks. Attack. Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, Shav, I believe, is uh, athletics versus athletics or acrobatics, like it grapples, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Assuming yeah. that he's wanting to shove, I don't want to put words in his mouth. Uh, well, it's not exactly a shove, is well, it? Well, sweep the leg. It, it, a shove, part of shove it's is knocking prone. Knocking prone, knock him prone. prone. Yeah. 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 I threw, but prone's not what I'm after here. Oh. Oh, oh. what? Because by throwing it off balance, like it's going to unclench its jaw. That's what I'm hoping to get. Oh, here. so yeah. you're trying to hurt its leg. Yeah. I see. Mm hmm. So I, I think it's just a regular attack, I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, go for it. Um. Yep, just roll that. Oh, oh, my no. God. oh no! Oh, oh it's your perfect this... record. Oh no! Your oh. first nat one of the campaign. Yes. Yeah, After yeah. eleven that's sessions. That's, 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 that's you could prevent it. Yes. <laughs> 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 Actually, this legit might be because he's gonna that wolf's gonna attack again. This might, if you care at all. <laughs> about this human, <laughs> about this if you child. care about this human, you will burn it's your inspiration for an unarmed attack. Alright, here we go! <laughs> <laughs> These dice are cursed. Get rid of that nat one! I don't like it. Oh uh, yeah, it removed from the counter. That's we actually We refuse to let that. Sid get a nat one this campaign. <laughs> we'll do anything in our power. <laughs> so does this still get the bonus, or is it just a flat roll? Uh, it... It replaces the roll you were making. 
It replaces yeah, the D20. Yeah, so you still get all the all the roll, the bonuses you would have gotten. Okay, before. So seventeen then. Seventeen. Oh, you didn't put it in the tower though. Okay, so I guess this <laughs> count. It's that is fine, uh, but I will be taking it. Yes, okay. thank you. Uh, seventeen is good. Loop. Alrighty. Uh, so we were going with the attack roll, right? Yeah, just a regular little attack. All right, I'll, I'll take the damage. Where's my thing? Here's my thing. Okay. Um, Tekka. Um, at first, you basically sort of like bonked the wolf on the side of the head when you tried to uh, uh, to stick uh, the the tip of the weapon into its mouth to pry it open. And uh, on the second one, instead of aim aiming for the mouth, you aim for the back legs and uh, um, successfully throw it uh, a little bit off balance. Uh, uh, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, yeah, I got a second action, so I'm going to make another attack. Oh, yeah. The... Wait, that's that the one? bonus action. Oh, that's that right. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this, yeah, he's going to try ramming the core staff again, but now against the throat or windpipe of this wolf. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, hold on. I'll be right back. He's charging it up. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> he has to charge his, his magical mechanical quarter step. Just doing like a tons of flourishes, like a baton routine. <laughs> <laughs> really winding it up. So like about a that. Shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here comes the roll. <gasps> oh! <laughs> yeah! What? I don't know. <laughs> My boy! Sid! Tekka at, is... At a moment so... of importance, we're making it happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, let's see here how much it actually does. <laughs> Almost double. Okay, that was already uh, two dice that you rolled. Uh, no, that was just one. I'm rolling twice. Okay, I thought it's I thought a it was just double. Hit. Okay, I thought it was uh, just double. No, you uh, you double the number of dice that you roll, but the modifiers aren't doubled. Gotcha. Exactly double. <laughs> Okay, so uh, there will be 12 total. Mm -hmm. Got it! Okay. And uh, that's the end of your turn? That is. Dang, that was eight. You would have taken out Talix. <laughs> <laughs> that is not impressive. Okay. <laughs> I'm impressed. You would have taken out Talix and Pip. Oh no. And Pontifex. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> if you ever wanted to be the big bad guy, now's your chance. <sighs> okay. So, uh. <laughs> so this happened. Um, Tekka, there was this moment um, where the. The teen and the wolf's grasp uh, sort of like fell silent uh, and, and still. And there was a moment when you you um, stepped forward and did, and did everything you could uh, to, to get this wolf to let go of him. And uh, once, you, once you hit him once, twice, um, the wolf finally snaps its attention its attention towards you and lets go of, of uh, the kid's arm. And in that moment, he, with a, a nat 20 on his death saving throw, uh, nice. he opens his eyes and just uh, uh, 
panickedly uh, drags himself uh, uh, away, now that his, ar that his uh, uh, arm is free, uh, away from it. So, um, he's... Teen, no! <laughs> Using his action to disengage. Okay. And he's <laughs> moving away. And, uh, uh, the wolf is going to attempt to fight you instead, next. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. <clears throat> Does a 15 hit Tekka? No. Okay, so that means actually that uh, both of its attacks uh, are miss. Um, so now that the, the the wolf has turned towards you, you can see that there is blood all over its head. Uh, some of it even has has gotten like in front of its eyes, and so in this in this uh, uh, in this rage, uh, it it lashes at you, uh, leaps forward, uh, tries to claw at you, tries to bite at you. You step to the right first, to the left at first. It's uh, uh, this white blur that tries to uh, take your life, but you're, you're quick on your feet. And uh, uh, both of the strikes miss. Brook. Who? Hmm? Okay, thirty. <coughs> Using my action to dash. All right, and as a bonus action, I will take out my sword and in one motion slice across the arm and use one of the crimson rites. So I take 1d4 damage and now my sword is shiny. Okay, uh, remind me, what uh, damage type is this going to be? Um, I... one second. What is it called exactly? Not lightning, but damn. Uh, where does it say? Is it force? I'll check. <laughs> <coughs> Don't mind me. You have cold. Yeah, but that's not the one. It's the one from the ghost lair. Uh. Oh. Radiant. Yeah, radiant. Found it. Yeah, it's radiant damage. All right, that's my turn. Okay, moving on to Pip. All right. Uh. Pip is going to move forward a bit more, uh, like near Talix, and Pip will hold his attack action for when Squawk gets the wolf. <laughs> Officially Squawk. <laughs> it is Squawk now. Okay. Then moving on to Pontifex. Uh, Pontifex is going to do his best to keep it and fall miserably behind. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really see the wolf token. Uh, how far is that? Is it in this square in front of Brooke? Uh, in these four. Yeah, cool. you can't so target that is, any of them. That is exactly 90. That's what I need. Uh, <laughs> Then, uh, yeah, uh, Pontifex, uh, kind of uh, trying to keep up, but not doing very well. Uh, it's just within range where he thinks he can do it. And, uh, is going to cast Chromatic Orb, uh, at second level. Uh, and hold on, I don't know what damage I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna roll it and see what happens. <laughs> oh, man. Duck, Brook? <laughs> <laughs> the D6 is gonna say what damage it is. Uh... It's going to do 
<laughs> oh, fire damage. Okay, yeah, he's just like winding up a big fireball, and I think he like feeds a little bit more magic into it than usual. That gets just a little bit bigger. And it's gonna do this much. Uh, 23 oh. points of fire damage. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he just throws a, a, a little bit of an oversized fireball streaking across the field and... Uh, oh wait, no, I haven't rolled the attack roll. What do I do? And hits maybe something. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> There's Alex, no pod defects! I have bless, it's no. fine. I'm it's already oh, dead. Oh fine. no! Does a 14 hit? 14 hits. Oh, oh thank god. Okay, then yeah, he, he throws the big fireball streaking across the floor and smashes it into the wall. <laughs> into whatever part was in front of Brooke. Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> nearly like started a thread wildfire. Needle between Brooke and Tekka. Twenty-three. Alright, and all of a sudden the clearing uh is fully lit. Uh Everybody, uh, regardless of distance and, and vision, can see uh, the scene unfolding in front of you. Uh, this wolf suddenly, for a brief moment, just enveloped in flames and then quickly are put out. Um, still very much fighting, but hurt. The bits of, uh, uh, of fur, like at the tips of it, uh, are singed and uh, the wolf has taken on a much more a grayer coloration from before. Anything else in your turn, Pontifex? Uh, that's it. Okay. Um. Okay. Kid musters up the courage to attempt to shoot the wolf. A Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Brooke, you hear a ting as something hits, uh, um, hits you on the shoulder. Just on like it, it's the, the full, just doesn't like it, it. Basically, gets stuck in your in, in your arm or just a tip of the, of the bolt. Uh, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> gets in there. You don't take any damage, but uh, he. Uh, very much missed. Uh, Talix. I am not hearing you speak. Yeah, alright, sorry. Mike. Alright. So, well, after getting a bit of a glimpse of the situation, I think Talix is going to veer to the right a little bit if he can help it. But he's still going to dash. So it looks like I can get about that far. Um, yeah, uh, that's all he's gonna do for now. He's going to, uh, fumble a bit, uh, in, with his hand and try to get to that orb, that, uh, piece of amber that he keeps in his pouch and get that ready for next turn. That's it. Squawk. All right. Uh, Squawk says, "Coming through." And uh, as Squawk flies by um, at this really quick pace, uh, you can see those. You know how raven feathers are sort of like black, but also have that blue tint. Yeah. Uh, and that that blue shimmery tint intensifies a little bit as he flies by, and from the tips of the feathers to the base. Uh, they begin to become translucent and then fully invisible as Squawk invisibly flies by and tries to get like over here towards the other side of the wolf before uh, taking an attack Okay. with Pip's held with action. With Pip's, yes. So that'll be a bitey attack. Bitey. Uh. Here we go. <gasps> what? 
I don't know why. Why is it 34? Oh, uh, I, I rolled oh, you rolled the two days. I was uh, like, how is that math <laughs> <laughs> happening? Does it still count? <laughs> the, the 20? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you okay. rolled with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, okay. Then this might hurt a bit. Let's do 2d4 plus 3. Okay. <laughs> well, that's 5 piercing. <laughs> <laughs> Which what? is average. You did say that it, it might hurt. It might hurt Austin, a little bit. No. But then it needs to make a constitution save. And here's okay. where the big void um, damage might Yeah, hold on. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said this was, a, this, was, this was a bite? It is a bite. Okay. Uh, I have questions, but I'll figure <laughs> yeah. them out on my own. Okay, and I need to Third roll a what? Bite. What did you say I need to roll? Uh, it's a constitution saving throw. Nope. Ooh, uh, plenty. <laughs> okay, so That's it does take half. 20. Of that five? Or the upcoming? Uh... Uh, upcoming. Okay, okay. So I'll roll... I just want to roll all of them, and then we'll have it. <laughs> oh my... Okay. So oh nine. my gosh. <laughs> nine poison. Okay, got it. Um... With Squawk flying by, and Brooke and Talis can both hear uh, like a bit of a breeze uh, as something something flies by and, and then uh, appears to take a bite from the from the leg that uh, uh, Tech attempted to sweep earlier. Um, as this, can you call it a bite if it's done with a beak? <laughs> I'm. Uh, it's what it says <laughs> on the on the sheet, like. <laughs> it's a peck, then. <laughs> sure. So it's um, a list of Pokemon moves. It sounds like a I'm Pokemon sure it's move. It... Poison peck. <laughs> poison Squawk, peck. use poison peck. <laughs> it's super effective, but also kind of not. Um. Okay, yeah, that was doubled. I got it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, you peck at the back leg of the wolf. Uh, Successfully. Mm hmm. Anything? Uh, <clears throat> anything else on, Squawk, on Squawk's turn? Uh, that'll be it for Squawk. All right, Tekka. Uh, yeah, I think. Huh. Yeah, I think it's gonna do this. So Tekka's gonna move around to here and take an attack of opportunity. Um, you can move through allies, so you wouldn't have to leave its reach. Oh, okay, good, good, good. good. Uh, and then just attack it a bunch. We'll see what happens. <laughs> just attack it a bunch. Twenty-two hits. Nice. Here he goes again. Seven damage. Whoops. All right, got it. Sorry, the whoops was from me running in the wrong number. Um, all right. Uh, first, you hit uh, the, the wolf on the back. You just swing your staff as wide as you can, just uh, barely missing Brook uh, with the width of your swing, and you slam it into the side of the wolf. Next. You have more attacks, right? Uh, yeah. Let's see here. And. This is just gonna be a punch to the face. Not gonna hit. Swing and a miss, probably. <laughs> uh, that does not hit. Yeah. The face punches back. 
That's gonna be it. Okay. Um, you all see Testine dragging himself a bit further. Uh, hold on, where is it? Uh, here. Uh, and reaching for something on the ground. Uh, and he. What he uh, pulls up in his arms is uh, um, one of those uh, gnomish rifles that you've been uh, uh, seeing recently. Uh, but then, like, he. Oh. You see him holding one in one hand, and then he holds up the other hand, uh, and you can see that it's uh, snapped in half. And he does nothing with that. We know who stole the rifle. It was that I... crappy lady's kids that were going to turn into yeah. the gnomes. Right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, gnome. Uh, uh, uh. We're going to have to have a conversation about gun safety with the children. <laughs> or the gnomes are going to have a conversation. Lock up your guns, safety. gnomes at home. Okay, here we go. This is a little off topic, but it's been bothering me. I had to find, <laughs> is there a bird Pokemon that can actually learn bite? There is one. <laughs> and it is the pterodactyl one, the the, the uh, newer one, the fossil one. Um, Archon, that turns mm. into Archaeops. It is the <laughs> only bird, is the only thing with a beak <laughs> that can get <laughs> bite. And it gets what? it from breeding. So we have confirmed via Pokemon that birds can indeed bite something. Yeah, they, but they really can. Like, just because their mouth is a different shape, a bite right, is a right. bite. No, yeah, no, I was wondering if there was, like, a proper verb for it, because biting generally implies teeth. Teeth. <laughs> um, it implies so, a mouth. Teeth. <laughs> that, that was all I was wondering. Okay, I'm trying to like get this right. Like a spider bites you, right? Um... But either way, as the wolf begins to back away from all of you, uh, the three of you... Can Squawk take reaction attacks? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it would be Tekka and Brooke, uh, um, who, if they want, can take an opportunity attack. Nice. Um, and I haven't found the exact spot yet, but oh god, I haven't used these in a while. <clears throat> Who starts? Not taking. Dennis, you do it. Okay. As we here. Oh. Okay, not oh. one misses. Uh, Tekka. <laughs> uh, so what am I rolling? Uh, do you want to take an opportunity attack on the wolf as the wolf begins to back away? Yes. Okay. So. Oh my gosh. Okay, both of them miss. Yeah. Um, what is happening? <laughs> uh, the wolf backs away but keeps its uh, its uh, um, its eyes on you guys, and then um, it. <laughs> that is <laughs> odd at once, and uh, then it um, uh, its fur sort of like stands up a little bit, and then uh, all these little uh, rubies that seem to like sort of like be stuck in its fur. Some of them just fly out uh, in a cone. Um, it's, uh, it's like getting shot at by a bunch of arrows. I'm going to need Tekka and Brook and this kid uh, to roll dexterity saving throw. Hey, can you get Squawk in that too? Uh, no, because like I was drawing it. I mean, I could. I was trying to like get. <laughs> if I if I get Squawk cool. if I get Squawk in this kid. What is happening? <laughs> Dennis! Wouldn't it be like, yes, <laughs> It's okay, I'm a beefy boy. <laughs> that is uh, true. No, it's fine, that's how I've drawn it. That's what we're sticking with. <laughs> okay. 
okay. Uh, <laughs> the wolf is a grenade. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, uh, Brook uh, fails, uh, Tega succeeds, and the kid fails. Oh no. <coughs> it's okay, I'm taking all the damage for Talek since he's standing right behind me. <laughs> Basically. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Brook's sheer size. Tekka dodges, so of course it is what's behind him. <laughs> oh no. Oh, come on, Tekka. <laughs> wow, Tekka. We thought you were cool. I knew it all along. Right. Um, that will be four. You're cool with a K. Turns out you're just cool with a C. <laughs> there will be fourteen piercing damage uh, to Brook, seven to Tekka, fourteen to the kid. What just happened again? Did it just like breathe? Uh, no, no, no. The the the, the ruby is uh, sort of like sh shot out of its fur. Some of them. Oh. Uh, and it's like little bits of gemstones just uh, uh, striking down in an area. Well, Pick them up, that's money. Now that's... <laughs> we got what we came for, let's leave. Now that's a Pokemon move. <laughs> that Probably. kid's got a gun, he's fine. <laughs> okay, so that was 10. We're gonna go, we're gonna go. The hecky. In this direction. Okay. Brook. Oh, you'll. If I hit. Alright. Can I. Activate a second. Can I activate a ride and a blood curse? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. You just can't have more than one right on the same weapon. All right, all right. Then, I guess, bonus action, right of binding on the ruby wolf. He okay. has to do a uh, uh, strength save. Which is here, by the way, in case you can't see the token. A what save? Strength. <coughs> okay, I have a 14. All right, it doesn't matter. Oh. Well then, I walk forward. <laughs> Ten, Twenty. Poor Dennis. See, buddy. All right, just, this, is a, this is the one. I'll swing. Mhm. Mm A 12 does not hit. All right, it's my turn. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is wow. crazy. This broke. Listen, I'm a fan. Wasn't there... Oh, uh, the, the <laughs> child is down, by the way, with a 14 <laughs> damage. Oh, no. uh, small detail. Here, loop. Wait, what? Uh, from the cone. Oh, shit. You got speared by a ruby. For some reason, I thought the kid was safe. Oh. Nope, it's because Tekka dodged. <laughs> now the kid is inverted at four feet in the ground. <laughs> we, we were joking that Tekka was in the way of the attacks. So Talix was... Uh, not Tekka, Brook was in the way of the attacks. So Talix was safe, yeah, but yeah, I, Tekka dodged, and so the kid got it. Yeah, I but thought... It's not failed anyways, save. So it didn't matter. I, I don't know why I had that in my head. It's 30 feet. I... Bip. Oh boy, I yeah. think I think Pip's just gonna start bolting towards the kids. So dash. <gasps> oh no, Sid. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? Sid, so you're just gonna end uh, from TTS. Oh, yeah, my dear is yeah. I did not. That didn't even happen on my screen. Good time. Oh, no. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if I'm gonna do anything else. 
looking at my bonus actions. I think I'm good. Okay, punk effects. <laughs> Uh, he's going to continue moving, and now Pip is going to uh, increase the distance drastically. And he said, "This is ridiculous." <laughs> he's going to keep moving. <laughs> uh, and I think while he's moving, and the wolf is backing away, and not everyone is in the way, I think Pontifex is doing like, uh, like, uh, like some kind of weird version of magic geometry, and is figuring out the optimal angle to curve this this ball of energy he's about to throw. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's gonna hit me, isn't it? So, we'll <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna cast it again at second level. Okay. Uh, this is the damage type. Uh, okay, I'll figure out what damage that means in a second. Uh, this is the attack. I, I I sounded one, and I was like, oh no, and I was like, gonna wanna wait. Doesn't matter. It's the damage type. Uh, I assume it's 26 hits. hits. Uh, uh, wait, you rolled a 17 and a 3. Why did you roll twice? Uh, it's a d4. I have bless. Oh, 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 yes. I thought you did um, the, and what I rolled Austin a did. One, <laughs> so this is acid. Uh, so yeah, he's he's oh. making a, that ball of acid that he used before, uh, and then it's gonna bump it up and it's gonna get even bigger. Uh, he's gonna do this much acid damage. And, um... Damn! 16 points of acid. Okay. Um, Talix and Brooke sort of, like, being on the way, and Brooke especially, uh, there's a few, like, drips of something that falls on you, and you can, you can feel it uh, hissing on uh, uh, Talix, your hat, and Brooke, just your clothes. <gasps> as, uh, no! Um, as the... <laughs> I'm sure there's like a baseball anime moment or something where he like throws the ball and it like curves like a, you know inches along the ground and like weaves between things. You know the camera is swooshing all over the place and then you know it hits hits the And then the it mark. slams into the wolf, uh, mm. whose whose fur begins to to melt uh, uh, under the 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 orb of uh, magical acid uh, that slammed into its face. Uh, and uh, that uh, is how you kill it. Oh, nice. he's like doing complex geometry. It's like, oh, that's too difficult. And just lobs an acid ball through Talix, through Tekka, and through Brooke to kill, to kill a dog. You better not have burned away any of those gems. <laughs> Wait, that killed oh. it? Yes. Oh, I totally like. Uh, I, I, what's the? It's like the carnival game where like you you throw the or er, like you fire like the <laughs> the gun, the water gun into like the really tiny hole. I think he just like threads the acid ball into its mouth. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, good teamwork. Good teamwork. Man, it's a long <laughs> throw. <laughs> 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 So much it's this. exactly 90, which is the max range. <laughs> okay, and um, yeah, before before the the is mainly off uh, Brooke, who's right in front of it. Uh, um, the acid just digs into the flesh of the wolf, and you can see like the exposed skull uh, beneath the fur as it then just falls down to the ground, trembling for a few seconds, and then unmoving. Oh. Battle's over. <clears throat> We're out of initiative. <laughs> the you old man it. comes jogging up. <gasps> Can you not all run off so quickly every time? I mean, I'm too old for this. I mean, you hit it. What's the kid's situation? Um, checks. There is like bits of these really really thin rubies, uh, like picture like needles. They're just long and really, really thin and they're like stuck uh, on parts of its face uh, and down its chest. And uh, he's currently unresponsive on the ground. I'm gonna try to cast Cure Wounds. Okay, pull for your heal.
This music is off her chip. Yeah, her there, there wasn't yeah. even a forest one. There we go. A little better. I thought it was <laughs> wrong. <laughs> uh, five hit points restored. Is he okay? Okay. Peach. Um, as you you um, how does your healing go? Um, it was cure wounds. Okay, it's a touch spell. Yeah. Um, yeah. So your your amulet glows faintly, and so does your hand. And you, when you touch the kid on the shoulder, this light sort of seems to spread from you onto him. And all these little needles uh, begin to pull out uh, of his skin. And uh, for there's this moment where from all these little puncture holes, blood begins to seep out, but then it closes right away. And uh, the kid opens his eyes. Uh, Terrified at first, you're just wide open, and then he um, instantly pulls away from you, and then the sort of like pats himself uh, uh, on the body and realizes that he's, that he's fine. Just, just rest for a moment. Sit here. Uh, Pip, maybe stay with him. Yeah. Okay. You take this. Oh, nice shot, Professor. <clears throat> uh, it's a sh sure. Uh, is he okay? He's alive. He'll live. Oh, is the teen okay. still on the ground as well? Uh, yeah. Like as as this unfolds, he begins to pull himself up. He, he drops the pieces of the rifle on the ground. He was like about to go towards the other kid as he basically the uh, Talix is just you know, on his way. I, uh, I wasn't aware of the situation. I just saw the wolf, and if I spent all of my magic, I would have would have helped if I knew. He did help. No, I mean with the kids. I thought I the screams were Tekka. <laughs> uh, the one in front of you, Talix, just uh, looks behind you, seeing uh, the other one uh, sitting up. And uh, uh, glances briefly at the group and then at you and, and says, Who are you? Well, we were the ones who were sent to deal with that. Looks like you tried to take things into your own hands. Uh, ooh, ooh. Okay, sorry. Just checking something. Um, no. <laughs> the... The teen just sort of like looks to the right where the body of the wolf lays and uh, then sheepishly just nods. It's admirable to want to protect your home, protect your family, your livestock. It's admirable, but to go after something like this alone was foolish. You don't have anyone uh, father figure, anyone? As he holds uh, uh, his mangled arm from like the shoulder with his uh, uh, healthy hand, um, blood seeping out of the wound, uh, he he looks down. Uh, um, he, he shakes his head, but uh, then he says, "We we take care of ourselves." Hold on, there's something I can do. Uh, I can burn my channel divinity to cast another spell, so I'm gonna do that and try to cure wounds him too. I forgot that he was like on the brink of death. <laughs> okay. Uh, Talix, your divine magic, uh, um, it's like it's its sewing its, his skin back together. Uh, in a matter of seconds, uh, the arm is back in a, in a reasonable looking condition, although it is uh, all the parts where the skin had been torn off, uh, there is really ugly scarring left behind. But you see him sort of like hold up his hand in front of his face uh, and wiggle the fingers and they all seem to, to properly respond. Uh, he looks pale, both uh, uh, from uh, 
the loss of blood and probably just from the, the scare in general, but he, he looks like he'll he'll be fine. Here, I'll be so with your brother. Everyone else, are you alright? <clears throat> A little winded, but yes. Been better. I'd take care of the kids first. Pip is kneeling down in front of the the younger kid, and uh, at this point, Pip has or Squeak has already gone back into rat form and has hidden, tucked himself away in the cloth. And Pip has raised the cloth up uh, above his mouth and just says, "Don't, don't move. You're you're hurt. Here, let me try and take care of some of this." And starts like plucking out those shards that may still be uh in his mm -hmm. or her skin yeah is some it... of them still being stuck in him even after uh Talix's magic magic you just start pulling him out uh and the kid lets you do that and he he seems to like barely pay attention to you uh his eyes are set on Tekka. Mm, Tekka probably has his like back turned to them and he's like slowly pulling out the last few gem shards and just kind of washing over the wounds uh, with water skin mm -hmm. just keeping a lookout into the darkness to make sure none of the commotion attracted any more enemies roll a perception check Okay, uh, Tekka, you, you keep your eyes peeled, uh, you listen quietly to the surroundings. Uh, uh, every once in a while there's a bit of a breeze that blows between the leaves and you can, you can, you can hear uh, them rustling. Uh, there's occasional call of a bird in distance, which uh, uh, doesn't sound like a hawk uh, to, to you as far as you can tell. So that doesn't particularly uh, worry you. Um, but besides the natural sounds of the forest, uh, for the time being, you don't uh, sense anything uh, approaching. Um, with that, Tega gives a quick nod to himself before turning around. He says, mm. Dogs not coated in dirt and mud, rather blood and death will never find trust with a child. Uh, what he said. Hmm. Um, Brooke, I'm not sure exactly what you need to do with that wolf uh, for your... Well... Whatever you need to do to satisfy your commander, what, whatever you call it, whoever's gonna pay you for your mission. You mean Grace? The Maybe? farmer? The client? Oh, sorry. I thought you had to. I don't know. I thought I thought you were gonna report to uh, whoever. <clears throat> Is that a thing? Yeah. I understand the misunderstanding, but us yeah. phantoms are rather individuals. We don't really obey anyone. All right. Well, if you're, gonna, if you're going to collect a trophy or anything, just can you wait till I have a chance to look at the body first? I figured if we were bringing it back, oh. I can always hoist it upon the disc again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can, you know, throw it oh, in the pile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does that need concentration? I checked, it does not. Night. <laughs> uh, while the professor was like huffing and puffing, <laughs> catching up, he's dragging the corpse of this hawk bear behind him. <laughs> wait, wait, how long is that gonna last? Is that one hour so we can make it back? Uh, it's I one can hour. Duration, do it again. But... Yeah. Oh, I thought you were out of spell slots. Okay. Like yeah, I am, but uh, 
You don't need the uh, spell slots as you refer to them. <laughs> oh, right. I'm... <laughs> I'm this is out of uh, spontaneous magic, but uh, I can amass a mount uh, in about 10 minutes or so to do uh, a select few. Yes, of course. I'm <laughs> familiar with the practice of channeling your, uh, your inner chi over a period of exactly 10 minutes. As all magic users do. No more, no less. Any more is a waste of time. Any less is sloppy. Hmm. So can you carry both of them? <laughs> the wolf and the hawk bear? Hey, probably. All right. Then I guess we can just bring him back like that. And you can take but... all the time you want to look at that. The kid with the scarred, like, arm, or mm -hmm. I guess one of his arms is, like, pretty, pretty mangled with the scars after being healed. Uh, how is he, like, looking? Um, uh, like, like, expression-wise? <laughs> Trying to get, like, an emotional vibe on him. A uh, rolling inside check. I'd like to do that for my kid. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, to you, the, despite having nearly lost an arm, uh, Tustin is like putting on a, uh, putting on a very brave face. Uh, he seems almost unfazed by the event. Uh, um, he's just like he, his back is straight, uh, and his expression is nearly emotionless, just looking tough uh, to the counter. Uh, Pip. The kid is looking at Tekka like it, like he was looking at the wolf. You see, whenever mm -hmm. Tekka's tail uh, flicks from one side to the other, you can see his eyes just sort of following it. And then he's looking around like he doesn't get why everyone else is not uh, uh, concerned. Young one, uh, let me set that crossbow down, please. Uh, <laughs> We're safe you... now. The kid, okay. uh, yep. Who uh, just lowers his hands, puts it down on the ground. Do you think you can stand now? He sort of like puts his lips together in a thoughtful expression and then he pulls himself up to his feet and nods. And he's like just slinking away a little bit this way. Well, the grade allows it. <coughs> So, what about your mother? I believe we've met her. Did you run from home? Uh, the older one addresses you and says, You're not gonna tell her what, what we did, right? <laughs> well, I think someone's gonna have to explain why you're coming home in the shape you are. You should be honest. But, uh... Well, there is the matter of, uh, that. Looking at the rifle. You know you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Well, not if nobody finds out. I believe the child has a, a point. I don't see what you're insinuating. He seems to have just found a broken rifle along the floor. Okay, listen. What a noble thing. Kind of stupid, but noble. And I can appreciate your situation, but you shouldn't make a habit out of this, all right? It's easy to justify it once, but once you do it once, Well, just try to be mindful, okay? Don't let yourself slip down a dark path. Wait, you don't might... we have don't we have to bring that rifle back? Didn't you say that the gnomes said we're looking for a rifle? We're going to yes, give I something believe to it's someone? Prudent that we should bring it back and return them to put an end to their uh, witch hunt. I would rather they take it up with us than with these children. We can just leave it there, I'm assuming, without putting a note to it. 
But Telex is right, kids. Being wanting to defend something is smart and noble, but doing it the way you did is stupid. Um, Unless you want to die. Telex and Brook, both of you can roll one persuasion check each. Oh, what am I persuading for? Trying to teach the Stay in a school. lesson. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> Wait, persuasion? Oh, or is no. this an intimidation? <laughs> <laughs> You're not, I mean, Tucker, get the saw. <laughs> get the saw. <laughs> Alright, the arm is Merely coming off. the words, tech, uh, demon guy, get the saw. <laughs> that is the intimidation. <laughs> okay. You see the teen crossing his arms and doing that thing where he's like annoyed with uh, the lesson, but you can't tell he's listening anyway, even if he's trying to look like he isn't. And he's like not admitting to the to the stupidity of his actions. Hey, guys, could I could I talk to them? Certainly. Um hey <laughs> I didn't mean to <laughs> eat myself. In the air. <laughs> um, Pip will just get close to them and say, What are your names? Uh, the teen introduces himself as Fortis and the kid as Alien. And then the younger one uh, um, says, What's your name? I'm Pip. Hi, Pip. What direction is your home? The older one points uh, uh, to the east and slightly to the north. And then when he does that, uh, uh, you see his hand uh, sort of like quiver for a moment. And then he adjusts uh, uh, the direction a little bit. I know you guys don't want to get in trouble with your your mom or your dad or whoever you're going home to. So I know you probably don't want all of us coming with you, but it's really dangerous out here. And I've gotten hurt too, see? points at his arm. Which, there's not really much there anymore <laughs> since Talix healed him and Pontifex <laughs> even mended the clothes. Well, well, there used to be something there, but but my friends here, they're, they're really amazing. I mean, they heal and, and see Tekka there? Tekka's really amazing too. He, I mean... We couldn't have gotten this far without him. He's one of my best friends. Okay, uh, now Pip can roll a persuasion check. Here we go. Uh, you see the younger kid, uh, uh, just sort of like, gulp, uh, uh, sort of like, in, in the silence of the forest, he's kind of loud, actually. Um, and as he looks at Tekka, he leans a little bit to his right to see him past you, and then looks back at you, and then looks down, and he, uh, the, the fear in him uh, seems just very deeply ingrained, but he he nods at your words, and uh, um, you're not entirely sure if it's because he gets to like accept what you're saying, or if it's more like he he is just uh, nodding so that because he expects you to to because um, that's it that's the reaction he thinks you want to see. Um, Fortis is looking more, again, his arms uh, uh, crossed, even if the mangled one is uh, uh, like a little off. It's not as uh, as uh, um, 
as strong of a position as uh, uh, he'd like to make it look. Uh, but it's looking just like a little bit past you, more towards the trees. We're not gonna make you, but I think it would be a really good idea if, if we went home with you. Or if you don't want all of us to, then it, at least let me go with you. Portus says, it, it's fine. Let's just go. All right. Um, Brooke. Well, okay. Well, everyone rest up for just a few minutes, okay? Before we head out. Also, don't mind the floating bear. <laughs> <laughs> Gather your strength. <laughs> they suddenly very much mind it. <laughs> I guess Brooke will start picking out the pieces of Ruby. Uh, How big are the pieces in that wolf? Uh, so the, the ones that shot out against you are really thin and they're also very brittle. Like as you pick them up, some of them just snap. Uh, but the ones on the wolf that are like deeply uh, stuck in its fur, um, when you when you pull them out, they're like they're they're sizable, uh, they're like the size of your of your thumb. Huh. And uh, plucking those out uh, uh, is always followed with it, like a, a little trail of blood behind it. They were just, All right, I have, like, just I haven't done it yet. Before it takes it as me ripping out all the dust. Okay. Rubies. Okay. Yeah, because Telex is going to say, oh, give me just a moment here. Um, yeah, I mean, so that's the, you basically already answered the first question, but he was going to just try to confirm whether the beast was mostly just a weird natural creature that we've never seen before, or if there's any signs that it's somehow, like, augmented or something else. Did you ask me or, or Winter? Um, uh, sorry, Winter, yeah. yeah no, Tal just... is, like, trying to discern Ma what this is. Yeah, make it a medicine check. Can I check as well? Just because sure, you said you. before that I've never heard of something like that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't tell you, but yeah, I'm going to take out my lantern, too, since it's dark, and we haven't really acknowledged that. Technically, my sword is still full of light. Oh, okay. And so is Pontifex's staff. Uh... Okay. Um... Well, the two of you mainly work on, like, seeing what the deal is with the rubies. And so basically what I described earlier is that, like, looking at them and trying to see if they're, uh, how, if, in what manner they may or may not be a natural part of the wolf. Um, so eventually you end up, the two of you just pulling one out. Uh, and uh, the, the way... It, it is feels particularly to Brooke is that uh, uh, these don't seem to be, um, they don't appear to be an unnatural and exterior part of the wolf that isn't supposed to be there. It seems like uh, they're symmetrical uh, across the body, which feels uh, uh, like it's a, in some manner or another, it seems to be just the way these uh, seem to uh, grow out of the wolf. Hmm. Interesting. Telex. It takes a few minutes to do what you do and draw it down. I've never heard of these things and probably definitely information that people want in the future. Unfortunately, most of the information I would have been able to get, I needed it to survive. But circumstances being what they were, there's no avoiding that, I guess. Rook, uh, I so bad to know where this came from. Additionally, with your 20, you'd be able to tell um, at this point that uh, a lot of the... Oh, and I guess it's just from Tekka and Squab. Um, the blows they have dealt 
have actually done very little to actually leave uh, um, visible damage on the wolf. Uh, instead, most of it, the, the things that actually seem to have killed this wolf are the... Burn acid? Uh, yeah, and the poison, uh, like the part of the leg where a squawk bit it. Um, where you can see just the flesh sort of like rotting away. Mm -hmm. Well, Telex, you can write this down. I don't know what it is, but the normal attacks of weapons didn't seem to be doing the main damage. So either it's the rubies, or the skin is pretty tough. But or it's magic. Or it's magic, yeah. So that is at least some information. Actually... That's such a shame. Pontifex, can you bring the book? Yeah, sure. Uh, he's here. And uh, he's just going to hand over uh, the journal to bro. I'll open it. Well... Is there anything in here about this wolf? I yeah. ask the book. <laughs> in the guide? <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. In a way that it seems kind of natural, but Beep. it's not obvious that the book is sentient to the kids. <laughs> okay, let me just go ahead and roll for that. nothing in this book either. Alright. Thanks, Pontifex. Sure. <laughs> I'll close the book on him and give it back. Just like closing the book like immediately <laughs> after a sentence just gives me the same feeling of like opening the door. It's like, hey, Jam, you like anything about Wolf? He says, no. He said, okay, you just shut the door in his face. Thank you, John. <laughs> close the book on him. <laughs> yeah, uh, well... Might come across a shrewd. <laughs> you didn't even really, like <laughs> browse the various pages. You just open it on one page and then close it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the <laughs> middle of the book. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, let me make a sketch and take some notes, and then you can pluck away to your heart's content. Hey, um, while you're uh, at it, can you uh, try to get one of the preserved rubies for me? I mean, you all can help me. The uh, more I'm, the better, the faster we're done with this. I'm going to get to work on uh, making sure this disc isn't going anywhere. Okay. Okay, so you're I'll... recasting floating disc and brute disc. Yeah, like before it runs out, just kind of, you know, replace the <laughs> disc with another one in the same spot. Mm -hmm. And Brook is retrieving the rubies? I'll try. And Talix is taking notes and sketching. Yeah. Okay. But first sketching and notes and then the rubies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured. Um, hmm. Once I get the sketch, we can start. Collecting things feels like a survival check. Oh. Uh, but roll it with advantage because of your medicine, your previous medicine okay. roll. <clears throat> what, like collecting the rubies? Yeah, for Brooke. It's okay. kind of like skinning. Oh. Are you yeah, also plus... taking. Uh... <clears throat> Are it's you also. Plus one. Okay, so 16. 16. Are you also attempting to take the fangs and the claws? Oh. Which also appear uh... to be made of rubies. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, once Alex is done taking notes and sketching things down, uh, Brooke, you get to work. And um, 
pulling out the rubies that are in in and around the, the fur around the neck of the wolf uh, is a little easier. Like all you have to do is basically dig them out with a dagger. Uh, so you all, you can just sort of like pry them out with the tip of your blade. Uh, but the, the claws and fangs will require a lot more work, the fangs in particular. With the claws you can just chop off the toes ultimately uh, if things get a little too difficult. But like the, the uh, all the teeth even if they seem to be, to be made of rubies, they seem just deeply connected to the rest of the skull, which is made of normal bone, uh, but like it feels like they, it's very hard to just break them off. Uh, um, so you're not able to get those unless you want to take like the entire the entire head. Mm, nah. I'll leave the, I want to leave the wolf as compact as possible. Okay. Does that mean you are taking the claws or not? Nah? Uh, if it requires me to t take off the feet. Yeah, you'd have to chop off no. to each toe oh. or uh, the paws. Oh, then I'll not do it right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, taking one of its toes is probably less of a deal than like severing the head, especially yeah. in front of kids. Yeah, but we can do that later. In front of the kids. <laughs> Uh, during the process of this, uh, Fortis is going to come up to you and uh, watching you do this, uh, he says, Can I help? Have you ever done this before? No, but if I do, can I keep one of them? Why not? Uh, Some story yeah. broken to remember the spy. Yeah, Burke would have looked at the others. Uh, sure. I'll give him a dagger. Well? Yeah, he has his he own. Has care oh, I take back my dagger. <laughs> and then I'll demonstrate it once and be as careful as you can while cutting around the ruby. Okay. To not hurt it. All right, he... I thought it does fine. It's slightly messier and definitely slower than you go about it, but like he, he, after a few minutes of work, he does manage to like pluck one out, uh, and uh, he he just cleans it on the ground. Uh, and in in his hand, uh, it, it looks a little bigger compared to uh, in your hand. Uh, and he he smirks to himself and pockets it. Uh, what is Tika doing uh, throughout all this? Um, yeah, so when we first heard that first wolf howl, uh, Tekka had brought Ollie back into the, the pack. Mm -hmm. And now that Tekka's bringing Ollie back out again, now that it's safer, Ollie seems to be like sulking a little bit. Aww. <laughs> and just starts like wandering off. Um, and I think. Tekash is just sort of waiting around, uh, waiting to help, like, bring the body to the floating disc. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. keeping an eye on the pangolin in the meanwhile? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright. Anything else that you guys want to do or say before you set off? Have you ever seen a pangolin before, Alien? Ah, uh, he shakes his head, and uh, he... It does seem a little bit more relaxed uh, during these few minutes when you guys are just sort of like sitting down and uh, um, he does seem... Like, even if he's he's trying not to look excited, but you can tell. That's Tekka's pet. Uh, I hadn't seen a pangolin before Tekka showed him to me. And I mean, Ollie's pretty nice, but he hasn't quite warmed up to me yet. Um, I've, I don't, I don't really know what I'm looking at. It's like yeah. a, it's sort of like a lizard. It's not. Um, and then <laughs> that's the moment when like Ollie stands on two legs and begins to wobble forward and that just seems to take Helen like very much of a surprise. <laughs> um, so 
so why did you two come out here? Um, for the wolf? Yeah, but why? Did, did it take someone? Were you out here trying to save Molly? Who's Molly? She's, she was the mother of many chickens. <laughs> um. You didn't see any feathers, did you? Alien? <laughs> um, it didn't... It's... It's all the animals. Uh, it's not just the chickens. And, and mom keeps saying that if this keeps happening, eventually we will not have any money anymore. And then we won't oh. have any food anymore. Well... It was very brave of you to come out here. Did you okay. guys take the gun because you thought it would help you? Ortus uh, said that he was uh, going to help us. Um, the, the whole thing, he's the brave one. I, I, I'm not very brave. I, I didn't want to come at first, but... Um, but... Well, I, I didn't want to to be a coward, and I, I want to help Mom, too. Well, you came out here, right? Yeah, but I wasn't very good. I didn't even hit the wolf once, but, but Fortis, uh, he shot it right through the head. And we thought, we thought it was dead, but then he just got up. Yeah. The creatures out here, they're, they're not like normal, normal animals that I've seen. I, it's pretty dangerous for you to be out here. And speaking of, I think that you should give the gun back. Or if, if you two don't want to do it, then you should at least give it to us because now the wolf's gone, and if the gnomes catch you with it, they're gonna kill you. Well, but, but, but Fortis said we could just bring it back and put it back where we found it, and nobody was gonna find out. What if they catch you putting it back? What then? Well, I'm really quiet. People make mistakes. He, he he looks down at a crossbow, and uh, uh, he tightens his fist. I'm just okay, saying. Okay, so if you... um, so if we if we give it to you, you're going to put it back. Yeah. And and nobody's back. going to find out. No one will know. Okay. Okay, well, um... He just, like, points to the two halves... Uh... That are just, like, lying there near him. And... By the way, alien... Hmm? Courage... Bravery... It doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means that you go even though you are afraid. So I... I was brave? Yeah. <laughs> cool. But I'm still not telling mom. Yeah, that's fine. He Pip smiles. picks up the two halves of the gun. Yep. Yeah, uh, Pip, as you pick them up, uh, this thing is likely uh, impossible to fix. Um... If there is, it, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's not a clean split, uh, you can say that this thing was like, uh, has collapsed uh, under uh, a cl clawed, uh, sort of like, like you can tell that the wolf has clawed this thing enough, so there's bits that are just straight up missing that have fallen off. Uh, but you are holding the two halves of a gnomish rifle. 
It's heavy. You didn't expect it to be this this uh, uh, this heavy in your hands. <laughs> I'll right. take care of it. Where did you find it? Um. So, where they are, um, where they are building the the train station, um, there's this group of people, and they have the tents set up, and uh, uh, it's a big tent with like the the red number in front. And uh, uh, if you come from the back, you can actually lift a corner of the tent up, and you can just sort of like slide it back where it was. Uh, all right. Yeah, Pip's like, what is a train? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip doesn't know. <laughs> is everyone Pip good to go? let him know that he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> <clears throat> Before we actually depart, Talix will suggest that we, well, if anyone wants to eat, they can, and he'll offer some, he'll offer his rations and water to the kids if they need it. Okay. Uh, Fortis turns it down, but the uh, alien does seem happy uh, to get, uh, at first just the water, but then he also, like, after turning down the rations, he looks at them longingly and changes his mind, and will have himself a snack. What do I write down for the rubies? Uh... Well, for the time being, you just have a handful of uh, rubies. Okay. Has the party eaten their rations for the day? Or had their food for the day? I don't believe so. Yeah. So Talix will also eat. Alright, we'll eat. You'll show the kids the magic of sandwiches. <laughs> Pip will need someone's food. Yeah, same. Oh, well, Talix. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Talix uh, used it all just now. Oh no. All all right. Right. That's fine, we can get food when we get back in town. We'll look for food. <laughs> you don't want any? You don't think it's hard to eat in front of you, do you? It's all really <laughs> all right, I'll, gi I'll give a ration to each of them. Oh. You too, Tekka? Uh, no, I think just as Brooke was doing it, Tekka was about to grab some from his bag to give to them, but yeah, Brooke was too quick. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> One succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, you did... <laughs> Something. Nice. <laughs> okay. Also, look at a handful of rubies. Um. This is before you set off. Feels like a good moment to take a break. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're gonna go on a ten-minute break, and after that, uh, how are you guys doing on time today? Because we started uh, later than usual. How long can you go? I've got like half an hour. <laughs> oh, well, let's well, not take together? a break. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, if well, we have half an hour, let's just uh, continue this then. Jason's gonna take like a two-minute break, but y'all can go on. Uh, all right, let's make it. Let's make it a two-minute break. Right. Two minutes. And yeah, we'll be right back. Thank you too. It's like very meticulously laid out. Hello. Hello. What's very meticulously laid out? Uh, I never noticed that these status tokens are actually just bags that you've just clipped into each other. I thought this was like a tray. Like, I thought this was a single piece. <laughs> I never realized that these are bags until I had my camera, like, panned almost flat with the table, and then I saw, like, the drawstring. I was like, wait, trays don't have drawstrings. <laughs> I had to come over and look. They're very meticulously laid out. Yep, so they are. So, uh, <laughs> so none of us have ever heard of trains before, but the kid just mentioned it casually in passing. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming I would have seen trains, right? Yeah, I figure if trains exist, Pontifex knows about them. Okay, so... Pip, if it's a Plurinan thing. Pip has no idea. 
um, Pontifex and Talix. I assume it's might no have even been on one. Uh, right. And uh, but that's because they they don't exist ac across Plurna. They do in the Gnomish country and the surrounding Elvish territories. Uh, on Plurna, you can take a train to a floating city. No. Most floating cities do not. But the terrain <laughs> beneath do. Right. Um, Wait, did you Brooke? say it's on Plurna or on, or on Lodena? Plurna. In Plurna. Okay. Uh, Brooke similarly might have seen them and might have been on one. Uh, you have Tuteka and Pip. Both of you wouldn't even have heard of the term. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but they are like a brand new thing uh, that have happened like in the last few decades. And they yeah, are also... extremely recent. Yeah, and they are also... Like it was yesterday. <laughs> they are of numbing, numbish uh, construction. You are right, Jason. I mean, basically every bit of technology in this world is like gnomes. Gnomes are, gnomes are already in the steampunk era. <laughs> the historical era of steampunk. Yeah, they're, they're yes. rushing their technology tree. Yeah. There was a time I thought, like, steampunk was a real <laughs> era of history. <laughs> I mean... It wasn't? I mean, well... <laughs> there were steam-powered things, but... Yeah. Not it's, everything yeah, was not like everybody was a punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Steam People punk weren't. Like a weird... uh... They were more like steam gentlemen. People it's... weren't okay. wearing coats, trench coats with like cogs on them for no particular reason. Yeah. Steampunk is like what we did in the 90s with internet and computer things. Like, imagine if someone at the very beginning of the Industrial Revolution wrote what they thought the future was going to look like. That's what steampunk is. That's mm -hmm. like what I think it is. But it's everyone's like a weird... wearing Victorian clothing. Right, well, because that's the era, right? Like, it's a weird... Like, alternate... It's Victorian like, era Jetsons. exaggerated vision <laughs> of what the Industrial Revolution would have been. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need a <laughs> survival check. Yes, oh, I am. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> when I when I'm in this channel, I'm streaming. <laughs> but I just okay. Thank you for explaining steampunk to <laughs> our audience. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, I trapped you. So which uh, I'm going to need somebody to roll survival check to head back. Uh, it's going to be with advantage, as uh, the kids seem to have actually a pretty good idea of where they are and where to go. <clears throat> One of them's lying about where we need to go. <laughs> Alright, um, I'll do it unless you want to, since you just spoke up. I'll only do it if nobody else does it. I'll only do it if nobody else does it. Now what? Now it's a paradox. Yeah, okay. Now, is one to have a chat with the older kids, so definitely not him. <laughs> okay. You lead us, Telex. Rock, paper, scissors. Where do I type? In the chat. All right, All right ready? Three, Three. two, oh. one, go. No! Okay. Buffalo two. wins, so it's Pip. Nice. <laughs> Nobody expects the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dennis, uh, your survival check. Loop. Oh, it's okay. Could have been only the five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, your group begins uh, tracking back through the, through the trees. Uh, at this point, you've been out here for uh, many hours, basically since the sun has set. Um, and the way back feels... E um, for the last half hour to an hour, you guys were tracking a sound 
Uh, so that was the moment where you sort of like went off the path from where you guys thought you were and and uh, um, that That's like the hardest part of the journey, but there comes a moment where you, you find uh, exactly where you guys were uh, And you begin to just retrace your steps backward and you take a bit of a, like a, um, a wider detour around the area where you originally uh, saw the Alk bear uh, just for safety, you go a little bit further south compared to it. Um, Pontifex, you're occasionally um, refreshing your light spell, yes? Uh, yeah, sure. If it like starts to dim, then he'll, you know, like like tap it like he's, uh, like he's trying to fix a light bulb. Mm -hmm. And a bit further, like towards the middle of the group, the younger kid, uh, Alien, has uh, uh, his own lantern that like he lit the moment when you guys set off again. And he's just holding that uh, up uh, uh, in his hand. Uh, so those two are your main sources of light. And uh, you guys are tired. Um, not just there was a lot of fighting going on, but like he, the, you got to to Vera uh, with a bit of travel, and then you've been traveling the entire night, and you've been out here for hours. So normally you'd, you'd have been asleep many hours ago. Um, so you're, you're just feeling the exhaustion build up, and your legs are feeling heavy. Uh, but eventually, uh, as you find yourselves going around the trap that Tekka set up uh, <laughs> earlier in the evening, um, you're back in the area where all the farms are, in the uh, northwestern corner of the colony of Vera. Uh, somewhere along the way, Pontifex is, is uh, he's been wanting to talk to this older kid. Mm -hmm. um, the one who uh, who got a messed up arm and uh, clearly like stole a gun and like actually successfully shot this wolf in the head and then has you know had this tough facade uh, or whether or not it's a facade yeah and I mean he got a trophy for it but uh, he's he's gonna kind of like saunter up next to the kid and like lean into him so you can he can try to whisper this and say you know these are these people that you are with they have concerns for you, of course, and they gave us warnings because you are a child. Uh, I know it hurts to hear that, but uh, for the time being, you are. But I just want to be the one to acknowledge that uh, what you did was very brave. It was uh, heroic. You did it uh, as a way of protecting your people. Uh, this is admirable. Whenever this comes up, I urge you to... Uh, explain to your parents exactly where you have been and what you have done and why you have done it and they may be harsh uh, in the beginning in discipline you may be assigned extra work or whatever it be but uh, i think it is worth it to put it out there as it is something to be proud of not to be ashamed of and uh, your arm there is a can be a sort of a reminder of uh, your bravery this day uh, and he'll like pull back the the side of his cow a little bit to show the side of his head uh, i also have scars of my own and well the person who came to my rescue he gave me a sort of a speech that uh, sticks with me to this day uh, maybe it could be of some value to you he said uh, if i recall correctly was to don't ever be ashamed of the scars that your choices have left you with. Uh, a scar means the hurt is over and that the wound is closed, and it means that you, uh, means that you conquered the pain. You've learned the lesson. You've grown stronger, and you've moved forward. Uh, a scar is like the tattoo of a triumph to be proud of. Uh, don't allow these scars to hold you hostage, to be ashamed of what you've done. Don't allow them to make you live your life in fear. Uh, you may not be able to make the scars disappear, but you can change the way that you see them. And you can start to see them as a sign of strength and uh, perseverance and not pain and regret. So whenever you see your arm, just remember that uh, you made a difficult decision. And I hope that you are proud of it. And don't tell anyone else I told you this. <laughs> so uh, at the beginning, uh, Fortis was just smirking uh, uh, with uh, with pride. 
Um, then towards the the middle of your speech, you saw his uh, uh, expression become a little bit more serious, uh, and uh, um, ultimately, in as he looks at the side of your head and sort of like takes in uh, um, the way the Pontifex looks beneath the hood, and uh, you can tell he's like he's trying to imagine what would even cause scars like that uh, uh, to appear. And uh, even though he's uh, he's uh, still pale and he's sweating a little bit, but he just uh, like he he um, rubs his arm across his forehead, and in the end he he gives a bit of a, uh, a thoughtful nod and uh, twirls his fingers a little bit, uh, looking ahead uh, with with like purpose, and he says, "I I um I'll think about it." I, wasn't really planning on letting mom know, but, uh, honestly, that might be the coolest thing I've ever done. It's gonna be hard not to talk about it. Conifex will give him a, a little, a little wink, and then kind of, you know, drift back into, uh, into, like, the middle or the back of the group where his light is needed. You are immediately tugged to one side by Pip. <laughs> What is a train? Oh, uh, Pontifex goes on to regale him of tales of trains for the <laughs> remainder of the trip. <laughs> Not too surprised. Oh. <laughs> so I know we kind of talked to each kid about it, but I don't know if it actually happened. Did we? Oh wait, no. Yeah, someone took the gun, right? Who, who got yeah. the gun? Yeah, I got the gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, we the the other child that has the rifle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> In responsible hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for, did for... insinuate that he had the gun. He was yeah. just saying it in advance. Yeah, I and mean, he he also sees into the future. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> for for clarity, uh, in the case of trains, indeed, people would learn that they are these uh, basically very large carts that don't need horses to be pulled, uh, but they can only travel across uh, these metal rails that need to be set down in advance. Wow, that is DM for kind clarifying of crazy that. when you think of and, it like that. Uh, um, <laughs> They're very loud, so that's like what Pip would understand. A uh, question: Are the trains powered by magic, or are they powered by like more mundane methods? Uh, yeah. Pontifex can roll a history check. Should we all roll to see? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it can be any of the three people from Plurna. If you're history, want to. Mm -hmm. so you get to know what. Yeah. Let's okay, good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, I'm getting out of balance. Mm. Good job. <clears throat> I rode the first train. <laughs> you invented the train. <laughs> uh, uh, most. Well. This would apply to both Talix and Pontifex, where uh, a large portion of your journey uh, to from the eastern to the western continent, uh, mainly through Barumia, uh, <laughs> was done by train. And, um, well, both of you being curious minds would have definitely, uh, certainly asked uh, uh, a lot of things about it, uh, uh, but uh, Talix is a person who happens to have had, uh, to have gathered the most information, to have retained most of it, uh, and ultimately Talix, you know, that uh, in terms of what they're powered um, by, it's both. Uh, they require very specific materials, but also um, they cannot move without magic. Pontifex explains that little bit then, I guess, to, to Pip. They, uh, they move not by horses, but by magic and compartmentalized explosions. Oh. It's like they make explosions inside of a smaller box, and uh, it makes the train move. Like a gun! 
It is exactly like a gun. They are basically super-sized guns. <laughs> According to oh, pun yeah. effects, they do. <laughs> he insists that they're explosions. I didn't roll an at 20, so I don't need to know if they actually do. He heard both, so he believes internal combustion. Beautiful. And, you know, that's kind of what the gnomes do. They don't have steam rifles. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> how, how accurate Pontifex is is uh, up to the DM. This is what Pontifex believes, or at least what he remembers. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he remembers it like it was yesterday, except that he doesn't. Okay. Uh, Austin, how much time do you have left? I have... Mm, 15 minutes. All right. Uh, as uh, the colony of era begins to uh, appear in the distance, uh, um, how, well, what would you like to do in terms of uh, where you're leaving the kids and what you're doing with the rifle and now you're entering the colony? Um, just take it from here. Uh, well, Talix at least definitely wants to take them actually to their home, like to the doorstep and like check up with the mom and be like yeah we found him you're welcome perhaps it is best if tech and i uh, don't accompany you yeah i'm not too keen on racist well <laughs> oh. and i need not... to talk to chris all right no i'm not a fan of her either but well, I suppose if you'd rather, we can split up and I just walk him home. Well, and I also have this little wagon carrying the corpse of a hawk bear and a ruby wolf uh, accompanying me, so where I go, they go, and I would assume that uh, their mother would have a heart attack. All right, so you will focus on collecting our reward and... Yes, I suppose I will go along with Brooke to turn this in. Okay. Uh, and I... Would recommend Tekka accompany us. So, I will. Okay. Tekka, Pontifex, and Brooke, is that right? You're going to, um, to see Kraith? Mm hmm. Okay. Following uh, Brooke wherever do you it is. want to do that now? Because it's like 4 a.m. Uh, at this point. Mm hmm. I think Brooke would. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, stop him. I don't know about you, but I don't want to uh, wish uh, to lug these corpses around town for the remainder yeah. of the night. <laughs> Prefer that we uh, be off with him as soon as possible. This seems like uh, something worth waking uh, someone up for. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Is Pip going with uh, Talix and the kids? I. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Oof. I am. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay, let's handle. Let's handle that first. Um, okay, hmm. the kids point out the uh, the building that they live in. Uh, so you guys are like on this side of the river, uh, all the way pff, off screen. Um, and as you as you're approaching the entrance way, Fortis is going to uh, sort of like pull with his healthy arm at Aliens' at sleeve and says, uh, "Maybe we should tell her." And the two have like a bit of a hushed conversation on uh, uh, whether to say the truth to their, to their mom or not. And ultimately, by the time you're at the doorstep, uh, it seems that they are undecided. I'll leave it up to you. The truth will probably come to light eventually. But for now, if you'd rather just go to bed peacefully, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, Fortis says, I'll follow your lead. That, well, that was my original plan, just climb back in um, into our room through the window and you know, don't say anything. Oh, uh, well, I thought we'd at least talk to your mother. 
but... Hmm. Well, but if we talk to her, then we have to explain why you found us and where we were and then what we were doing. Well, that's... And then... Like I said, you're gonna have to explain your wounds. And then there's that, and he points at the rifle uh, that Cape has. Well, what do you think, young sirs? They glance at one another, and then eventually Fortis just uh, like sighs and says, Well, Alien is probably going to mention it anyway, even if I tell him not to. <laughs> so, and Alien says, No, I'm not. I can't keep secrets. And uh, Fortis just like takes out a key and opens the front door. Uh, everything inside... Um, Inside there are no lights, but there was a uh, there was a lantern hanging from like the on top of the door uh, on the porch. Um, and yeah, he opens the door and walks in, and uh, um, steps aside and lets you in if you'd like. All right, thank you, sir. Pip. And uh, hmm? I just. I, I beckon Pip. <laughs> oh. Pip comes. Great. <laughs> all of Pip you. Pip cometh. <laughs> all of you walk in, and uh, uh, when you're inside, as Fortis is closing the door behind him, he just says, Mom! Mom! And. Uh, Pip, like, puts the gun pieces behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that from as Pip puts the gun to his head. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> it's just a prank. It'll be fine. It's just a prank, Mom. <laughs> it will explain everything. Sorry, that that really took me just off guard. Poor Talik surrounded by kids, and they're all they're all mad. Uh, as you all had like imagined, uh, the woman who runs uh, uh, out of one of the rooms and into the the main area uh, is uh, Liana, uh, the woman who had uh, ultimately refused to um, chip in for the party's reward. Uh, um, for killing the wolf after seeing uh, that Tekka was among them. And uh, when she comes in, there's like a brief moment where she stops and she didn't seem to, to at all expect Alex and Pip to be there. Uh, but then she sort of like ignores him and comes forward and hugs Alien and tries to grab Fortis, but it's like he very swiftly manages to like dodge out of the way. And, uh, <laughs> and. Did you roll an attack roll for that? <laughs> <laughs> I did not! You just an athletics check. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> <laughs> he dodged the hug. So I'm still thinking about the rifle, God. <laughs> uh, and it, it basically like pulls Alien uh, just up off his feet um, and says, It's... You've been missing the entire day! What... What have you been up to? And Fortis just goes, mm -hmm. And Alien goes, mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> She... She sighs... And, and says, We're gonna talk about this later. Um... As... For you... And she turns towards the two of you. Good evening, um, Mom. Why... Why are you here? Oh, I just thought uh, I'd make sure these two made it home safely. And, uh... Well, I suppose that's done. You you found them wandering around where they shouldn't have? Probably bothering the gnomes again, is that is that it? And, like, she just glares at Fortis. 
Well, I'm sure these two will have quite a story to tell you, but maybe in the morning after they rest up, they've had a very, very hard day. Is that, is that blood? You're covered in blood, both of you! And she, like, sh starts looking them over. Um, Fort is, like, visibly annoyed and alien and just uh, uncomfortable. And uh, she, she sees all the little places where they are scratched and bruised and Fortis's arm uh, looking really bad. And she pretty much begins to drag Fortis like into the back where you uh you imagine she's, she's going to begin doing something about uh, uh the wounds but like halfway there she turns back and says did you did you see what happened to them and she's asking italics i can confirm that they were brave uh both brave young gentlemen they uh well they wanted to take it upon themselves to protect your farm Uh, the the mother and the children just like, exchanged this long silent look and then Fortis just finally like breaks under the pressure and says I'll, I'll tell you everything mom and uh, content with that um, she backs him further into the house until they go into the side room and they're out of sight excuse me miss she pokes her head back out for the record, <clears throat> they're both alive right now because, because they were helped by two demons. <laughs> <clears throat> Not a demon, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Our friends were, well, you owe a lot to that man you insulted earlier today. That said... Ah, uh, you can see I can, her... uh, I can help with their wounds if they persist in the morning. I have some medical knowledge. Um, she... Her eyes are squinting a little bit as, uh, I guess basically just woke her up. Um... And, uh, when she... Mm, Alright, hold on, let me, let me, let me roll this. Rather than addressing either of you, she turns back towards Fortis again, still holding on to his, uh, healthy arm. And she just repeats back, Two? And he, he actually shrugs. I only saw one. And uh, Alien, who's still like with the two of you, and he's looking a little uncomfortable, like he doesn't quite know what, what to do with himself. Um, he says, well, but he's not really like a demon. The uh, Liana. Uh, finishes dragging Fortis into the side room and, you, and from down the hallway you can hear her say you're going to tell me everything that happened, okay? And you're going to be honest and you're, go and you're not going to make any of it up. And um, Alien just left with the two of you eventually just sort of like looks around and says you want water? I'll just look to Pip. Pip shakes his head. Uh, okay. I've still got some left from earlier, but I appreciate the favor. Um, Make sure your older brother gets something to eat and drink, though. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know where the food is. Alien. He didn't act like a demon because he's not. He's a friend. Well, um... Okay. Right. It's just... Why does he look like that, though? Why People do look you different. look like you do? <laughs> That's a big talk. 
Did his parents look like that? I haven't met them. But I know one thing. He's he's a nicer person than you give him credit for. And I think if you give people a chance, if you talk to people, you'll get to see another side of them. He did save Fortis. He saved me many times too. He's a very brave man, just like you. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. Um, I had never actually seen somebody like him. I just heard about them. Well, it's. Always interesting to meet people, new types of people for the first time. There's so much you can learn about them. Um, Alien again kind of looks like he has no idea what to do with his hands, so, um, just awkwardly holds them in front of him and okay. looks down the hallway where we're. Uh, you can hear the voices of Fortis and Liana just talking, and um, the sloshing of water in a bucket. Okay. Ah, go. Yeah, you should probably get to bed. Yeah. Uh, and I'll get food for for my brother. Maybe myself. And you can tell too. your mother that uh, she wishes to talk with us again. Well, we'll probably be staying in. Whatever the popular inn in town is. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell her. Um. Oh, these are getting really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he accompanies you to the door. Just like ten feet over. All right. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Are you here? Answer from Dandy Hallway. Italics hold these. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> Put them in my backpack. If there's room. <laughs> um, there. Oh, it's it's in half. Okay, if it was whole, it would not fit. It would like stick out. Uh, but we have established that. Uh, <laughs> hmm? It's a gnome-sized rifle. They're uh, nearly as tall as they are, though. <laughs> um. But yeah, because it's tapped in health, and because we have established over and over that Talix's backpack is enormous and uh, just has a lot of space uh, inside, uh, you're going to just yeah, you can fit the two pieces in like diagonally, <laughs> the and, then, rifle. and then close uh, <laughs> the the top of the backpack over. And uh, we're going to pick up next session with the rest of the group. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. Good okay. talk, you two. Good talk. Ending racism one day at a time. <laughs> Yay for Tuesday session! <laughs> you can't just call everything you don't like a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are devils. <laughs> That's right. And Two demons, there were none! Chiefly. Yeah. <laughs> You're a demon. Well... well I'm glad we could be here for this, and, good news, we do have this upcoming Sunday. I'm nice. off this weekend. Nice. Great. Wow. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't hear what were you saying. That was talking. Oh, Matt. No, I was saying that's great news because my like whole next week is just crazy busy and it was going to be like a struggle to fit it in. So Sunday oh. is perfect. Great, great, great. <sighs> and that's also great for our lovely viewers, I'm sure. Mm. Yay! All right. I awesome. love my friends. Friendship. That's all of you guys. The power of friendship. <laughs> nice. Okay, then I'll be, I'll be seeing you in uh, uh, less than a week. 
Let's go. Thank you uh, for playing with me today. Who is the next recap? Is it Sid? It's Sid. Yeah. Uh, Sid gets a really simple one. Uh, for a shorter session, there was uh, health combat. It just means so... more pressure. But he oh, does no, that no, only is... five days. So what you're saying is I need to take notes again next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes you do, yes you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, to end the stream here. Um, yeah, thank you again for being your wonderful selves. And I will see you this coming Sunday. Bye. See you guys Bye, everybody. Have a good one, guys.